we're going to talk about so I'm going to go on a high I work in the autism field as a consultant and mentor for young adults, and I've been a working musician since I was 16 years old. When I was 14, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism. It happened to be the same year that I got my first bass guitar. These days, I spend more time in the autism world than on stage with bands. But I've played hundreds of gigs with dozens of bands and spent many years studying music, including several trips to Nashville, where I attended camps run by my friend and favorite musician, Victor Wooten. Both musicians and people with autism tend to see things a bit differently. To explore the ways that we think differently, I asked dozens of musicians what they think of when they hear the words C major. Their responses were varied and interesting. All white keys, the people's key, all natural, uncomplicated. My own internal process is a little different. When I think of C major, this is what I see. I don't have synesthesia. I don't see shapes and colors in everyday sounds. But like many people on the autism spectrum, I am a visual thinker. Music is the most complex thing that I know, and my mind creates visual references to manage that information. I see chords, scales, and melodies, not only as sounds, but as shapes. I see my bass as a grid, with the strings laid out in lines. When I play a note, a dot appears to mark it on the grid. I see it in the air when I play. I see it when I close my eyes. I even see it when I hear a song on the radio and I imagine how I would play it. Whether I'm playing a simple groove, a complex pattern. It all starts on my imaginary grid. Going back to C major, the scale lays out across the strings, and I can look at it in note names or in dots. The root note is always circled, because that's the most important note and my reference point no matter what I'm playing. As I play through the scale, I connect each note to the next with an imaginary line, and my scale becomes a shape. Music becomes a game of connect the dots. When I play, I can remove the grid and even the dots, and I see everything in a series of lines. The harmonic minor scale has a different sound and a different shape. I think it sounds pretty cool, too. <laughs> a scale is made up of seven notes. Half the notes are chord tones, or the most important notes, and the other half are non-chord tones, or extensions, which are less important. In my mind, I can visualize that the chord tones are green and the extensions are blue. Now my visual scale has both shapes and colors. But when I play, I don't see only the notes I'm playing. I see all the notes I'm not playing, even the ones that aren't in the key. 
My base lights up like a Christmas tree, with red dots filling in every chromatic note, which I like to think of as jazz notes. Every time I touch my bass, or even think of it, I see these grids that span the entire instrument and tell me about every note I could possibly play and its relationship to the key. I see shapes in chords as well as scales. When I play a chord, I draw a line from each note to the next, and I create a shape based on its fingering and position on the neck. Autumn Leaves is a jazz standard with a common chord progression. And when I play it, I imagine the chords written out in traditional music form, but I also imagine them as shapes. When I'm on stage with the band, it all comes down to shapes, and that's how I see everything that I play. This is a melody that I wrote, and in my mind, it's a shape as well as a sound. I see that same shape whether I play it slowly or at tempo with the band like this. Now, I am a visual thinker, which is not unique. My musical system isn't unique either. There are many other musicians who use visual cues or layers of shapes in their understanding of music theory. What sets me apart is that I am autistic, and like many people on the autism spectrum, my mental transcription has extra layers and additional steps. The difference between me and other musicians is that they can put the visuals down when they put down their guitar, but many of us carry those extra steps with us everywhere we go our minds are filled with layers, extra steps, and detailed analysis for even the smallest things. Even having a conversation looks simple from the outside, but in my mind, I'm processing layers of information far more complex than the key of C major. Body language, eye contact, word choice, inflection, all mapped out with the same detail and complexity as a scale on my bass. While we each have a unique perspective, we often believe that everyone shares our view of the world. I played music for over 10 years before I learned that not everyone sees autumn leaves as a bunch of lines. Of course music is shapes. How could anyone hear this melody and not see an upside-down triangle?
My hope is that when you leave here today, you'll take a moment to look at the people around you and recognize that while you all shared the same experience, everyone has a unique perspective, and you can't always see it from the outside. We have a lot of work to do in supporting those who are different and see the world differently. The first step is to recognize the differences between their view and ours. The next step is to respect those differences. We can all take those first two steps when we leave here today. Thank you.